Good morning. This is, again, another broadcast of Chatting from the Word with your host, Brother Oscar York. I notice, if you notice, that we have a new scenery uh, this morning. As I said, we got rid of the chair, and now we're going to just simply be chatting from the Word. I think it's a better uh, uh, a title for the show because that's what we're talking about is the word of God because I believe this morning that the word of God has power to save your soul and mine you know Jesus uh, John himself said in John 1 in the beginning was word and the word was with God so we got to understand that the word was in the beginning so we want to chat from the Word on this broadcast. I know some may not agree with some of the things that Brother Oscar and others are chatting about when it comes to the uh, body of Christ or what the Word may say itself about the body of Christ. And if we have those that disagree with me, get, uh, send me a line or two. Uh, make a comment on YouTube at the bottom. Or email me. I mean, uh, as I said many times, I'm not uh, unreachable. Talk with me. If you disagree with me, talk with me. And the reason why I can tell some are disagreeing with me because others have stop viewing the show and others don't even much view the show so don't 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 if, if you disagree with me let me know because i believe that and i hope you believe it too that heaven is important that going to heaven is important and i, I know that you do not do not want to miss going to heaven because heaven's a place of eternity. It's a place that we are going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ through all eternity. And the way we get there is prepare today for that journey to get to heaven. I know sometimes you may say it's not easy, Brother York, with so many uh, different uh, voices in the world. And I agree with you, you have so many voices in the world. And some is hard to know what to accept and what not to accept. You know, just like what Paul said in 2 Corinthians, I want you to read this to you, 2 Corinthians. Paul said, for some are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. You know, it is so hard not to believe false teachings when they are transforming themselves into the angel of light themselves. So basically, the only way we know when we, when, when we are, are presented with false teaching is know the word ourselves. Next, I want to say that subscribe to our show we uh, we've been on quite some time now we only have 28 subscribers we need to do better uh subscribe to our show and i'll be happy that you do i welcome your uh, your subscription and and uh and, and uh, help brother your broadcast this show tell others about jesus christ because the message of christ needs to get out to the world it needs to get out and we, the, in the body of Christ, we need to rev it up a little bit and tell the world how good and how loving and how merciful our Lord truly is. So do that. Subscribe to our show, Chatting from the World. I'd be glad that you did. And I'm so glad uh, on Facebook to be chatting with several of you on, ch on Facebook and other entities that you have chatted with me on. I, I'm so thankful for that. Brother York loves to talk with us. Love to talk with you. 
Uh, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a book of man, a book of man that you can't talk with. Uh, I, I, we can talk if you want to talk. And I, uh, I see on Facebook that many have requested prayers. I, I believe in prayer. I believe in talking with the Lord. I mean, uh, when we're having difficulties, the Lord is the one we need to talk to sometimes. And, and I want to request a prayer for my, uh, my brother. He's, he's, He's my baby brother, Clarence York. He had a, uh, on the other day, he couldn't walk. He had problems with walking. And right now, he's in the hospital in Houston, Texas. So we want to uh, ask that my viewers and those that can get a prayer across to pray for my brother. He's really having difficulties. And so am I. Keep me also uh, in your prayers also. I request your prayers. And let's. Uh, pray uh, for one another. I mean, uh, it's just a good thing that the saints, that we the our saints, continue to pray for one another. Because in the world that we are living in, prayer, prayer is a solution sometimes. Sometimes prayer is the answer. So pray. Pray for my brother. Pray for me. Pray for others who have asked for prayer. We pray with me, please. Our Father, which art in heaven, Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Father of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Father, we thank you so much for this day. Father, you have blessed us to see a day that uh, have never been promised to us. But Father, you allow us to see this day. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who bled and died on Calvary's mountain, that through him we might have the gift of salvation, Father. Father, we pray for those that are suffering from pain. Father, if I'm praying for you, we pray that God heal your body if you're going through some pain. Pray for those that have lost loved ones. If I'm praying for you, I pray that God would comfort your heart this morning. Father, I'm praying for those that are having difficulties in this life, Father. And if I'm praying for you, Father, I pray that you help them through those difficulties. Because, Father, we recognize sometimes this world can be cruel to us, to our dear friend, to us that are truly living for you, Father. Father, we pray for the body of Christ. Father, we pray for each body that are truly teaching your word and sticking with the doctrine, Father. Help them to win souls for you, Father, out of an evil world, Father. Sometimes this world is not made for us Christians. And sometimes, Father, just be so good just being your son's body. Father, we pray for those that are lonely, that are in a nursing home. Father, we pray for those that are behind prison bars. Father, we pray for those, like I said, that's having difficulties. And we pray for the message. We pray, Father, that may not return to you, Lord, that may reach the hearts and minds of men and brought men and women, boys and girls everywhere to come out the world of sin and come and ask, what must I do to be saved? In Jesus' blessed name do we pray. Amen and amen. As I said, we are coming from, from a different way. We're not in the chair. We are, uh, are, are here. Now, I know the background is different, and you're not used to seeing Brother Oscar like this, but uh, I'm glad to be on this morning. And uh, today, being April, I believe the 16th, and another Monday. And like I said, we broadcast every Monday. We hope and pray that you tune in to see uh, what is being chatted about or discussed because. I believe that the word needs to be uh, told, and I believe that uh, we that are, are Christians need to get the word out there. Uh, I, I love uh, the, what word can I use? I, I love the things that people are coming up with, the laptops, uh, internet, uh, Facebook, YouTube. It gives us who do not have a chance to speak the word, to get the word out. Use it for 
glorification of Jesus Christ, to, to win souls uh, to the body of Christ. On this morning, we're still working on this series, the Old Testament, the New Testament. And if you are taking notes, your notes should, the heading again, if you haven't had your notes up yet, it should be the Old Testament slash the New Testament. And we, we're coming from the last part of Hebrews, uh, I believe, the 8th chapter. Turn with me there right quick. If you have your Bibles, the Hebrews, uh, the 8th chapter. Uh, and I believe we, we're on the last part here. And here we're talking about the people of God. And last Monday, I said that we're going to discuss the people of God. Who are the people of God today? And that's what we want to discuss this morning. And I don't know if we're going to finish discussing it uh, on this Monday. And if we don't finish it this Monday, we'll finish it next Monday. For we're on the last part of Hebrews, the 8th chapter. And I thank you. If you have a copy of, of, of the Word, I thank you for getting your copy. But here, and we want to read it again. We read it last Monday, but we want to read it again. Here in, in, in verse 8 of chapter 8 of Hebrews, the Bible said, For fighting fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judea, not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regard them not, said the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I would be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And that he said a new covenant. And he had made the first old and now that which decayeth and waxed old is ready to vanish away. On last Monday we start off the vanishing away how the old law has vanished away. And now God has a new group. Now, I wouldn't say a new group. He has a new covenant. A better and an excellent covenant. We recognize that we must recognize that even in the beginning, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost work together in the beginning. When God said, let us make man, this give us the idea that God was not working by himself. This gives us idea that God was working together with the Son and with the Holy Ghost. He must, John said the word, that's why I quote in the beginning. The word was in the beginning with God. And the word was God. And then we father out and said the word became flesh and dwelt among men. In, first, in John uh, chapter 1. So we know Christ was in the beginning with God working together. That's the oneness of God. And then if you recognize through, through, through time, because we, we, we serve a God that is from generation to generation, that God through time, uh, through Abraham's seed, he came with one nation, through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which was Israel, again, dealing with one nation, one group of people. And today, and today God deals with one group of people today. Many in the Christianity world, as I said last Monday, have it all confused. They, other than heaven, has so many different denominations. 
Well, I meant to tell you, and I know men might disagree with Brother Oscar, but God never meant for denominations to exist. Even when we go back and read what, what Christ himself said in John, read, turn with me to uh, uh, John, the, 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 the 17th chapter, and we want to see what Christ said about it. About it. John, John is the 17th chapter, and we're going to begin reading at verse, uh, let's say at verse 17. Here Jesus himself said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And thou hast sent me unto the world, even so have I also sent them into the world, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one as thou father art in me and i in thee that thou also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me here christ himself prayed that we be one and the question still remains who are the people of god i'm here to tell you my friend that the people of God is only one. It's only one group of people that God himself recognized. I know that might go against the grain with lots of people. And I know lots of people might be uh, getting upset with Brother Oscar. The reason why I know that because I know a few that are. But Christ only meant for there to be one body, one church, one body. One group of people, one family. And who is that family today? Who is that family today, I ask? With so many denominations. You got the Baptist, you got the Catholic, you got the Lutheran, you got, oh, the name just go on and on. But I'm here to tell you, don't that say something right there? That God himself is not divided. But we have so many denominations. And that's what the word denomination means. A division. A division. And we know God himself did not intend for there to be division. The question still remains. Who are the people of God today? Many may say, well, y'all church Christ think y'all are the people of God today. I know one thing. I know that the body belongs to Christ. And if anything should be, we should be, is of the body of Christ. I know that. Uh, I know that uh, in Ephesians 5, that Christ, that Paul compared the church to the bride of Christ. And when one gets married, the wife usually wears the husband's name. When I married my wife, she became Mrs. York. You understand what we're trying to say here? The church, if it's truly the bride of Christ, it is going to wear Christ's name. Now, like I said, if you disagree with me, let me know. But the body, the church belongs to Christ. That's the family today. That's the new Jerusalem. This is what Hebrews said. Turn with me to Hebrews, I believe, uh, the 12th chapter. And the reason why uh, we, we're going that far because we we just done a study in our series 8, 9th, and 10th chapter. But Hebrews itself said this in Hebrews 12, verse 22. But you are coming to Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, 
the heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn. Who's the firstborn? It's number by but one firstborn, and that's Jesus Christ. What we truly mean by firstborn, Christ died and he rose to never to die again. That's what we truly mean by firstborn. So basically, who rose and is alive today? That's Christ Jesus. That's Christ our Lord. And let me finish reading it. It said to the General Assembly, the church of the firstborn, the church of Christ, if I can insert that, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. My friend, that is the scripture. Most want to deny the scripture and say it doesn't say that. But it does say the church of the firstborn, which is the church of Christ. Now we ain't, no, 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 don't think Brother York is just simply talking about a, a title. But we're talking about not just the title, but also the doctrine. You cannot have the, the head without the body, you understand. So you got to have the, also the title, but also the doctrine. We're not just teaching, oh, you just got to be Church of Christ. Because I know many Church of Christ has the title Church of Christ. But once you go inside, you see it might be a whole different ball game from what the Bible may say. So simply, we're not just saying the Church of Christ. We're talking about the name and the doctrine. Don't get Brother York wrong, because when he's talking about the Church of Christ, I'm talking about also the doctrine of Christ, the oneness of Christ. I believe this is what Paul said in, in 1 Corinthians 10, 1 and 10. Paul, he prayed, he, 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 he begged the Corinthian church to not to divide. Paul says this, and if, if you have a have, have a copy, like I said, your Bible, just just turn to First Corinthians, uh, first chapter, verse ten. Paul said, "Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together." in the same mind and in the same judgment. The people of God today are going to be speaking the same thing, the same mind, and as Paul said here, the same judgment. We're going to end it here. We hope and pray that I've said something that calls you to think, that calls you to be a part and be added to the body of Christ. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, Father, we thank you so much for all the blessings that you brought to us today. Father, we thank you for the body of Christ. Father, we pray that we continue to be in the body and that we can tell others about you. Father, we pray, Father, we got those out there that's not part of the body of Christ. We pray that they become a part of your son's body, a part of the body of all the church that you can read of in your word. For we pray for those that are lost. We pray for those that are in the denominational world that they may walk out the denominational world and be a part and be added to the body. And for we pray for this program, we pray that Father it may have a working on people's hearts and minds and soul that it may win them to Christ. Father, we pray for this program. We pray, Father, that you keep me healthy enough to bring this program on every Monday. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. As always, visit my webpage, audio book. Uh, this is the only way this program will be continuing going if you order a book. Uh, order a book. Uh, two books. Uh, 
a peaceful place from the storm, and bridges of friendship. Audio book on my webpage, RCL Publishing. Audio your book and read. Because always I believe with reading come knowledge, and with knowledge there is power. And as always, and as always, God loves you, and I do too. Goodbye. Have a good day. We we'll see you next Monday. Same station, same place. Love you in Jesus' name. Visit a body of Christ in your area. Bye-bye.